welcome to Mom and Mind, a podcast about maternal mental health, discussing conception, pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. Real stories from moms and family members who have made it from struggling to wellness, and interviews with experts and advocates who work for moms and families to get the help they need. This podcast is meant to offer information and awareness and is not a replacement for treatment by a professional or professional training. Hi, welcome back to Mom and Mind. I'm your host, Dr. Kat. In this episode, I have the pleasure of speaking with LaShanta Edwards. She is a doula, an author, an advocate for maternal mental health, and the CEO and founder of A Mother's Sanctuary, a nonprofit in Houston, Texas. She does a lot of work out there to support the moms in her community and also teach the healthcare providers that might be seeing these moms. So she's going to give us a little bit more information about the nonprofit. She's also going to tell us a little bit more about the book, A Dark Secret, where 15 different women came together to tell their story about maternal mental health and talk about their struggles and how they got through and got on the road to recovery. So I'm really excited for you guys to hear this episode today. Welcome, Lashanta, and thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on as well. And I'm, you know, really excited to let people know about the work that you do and the kind of help that you offer moms and families. So let's start by talking about some of the work that you do and how you got into the specialty. So as you said earlier, my name is LaShanta Edwards. I started a mother sanctuary in 2014 to help moms. Funny story, driving in my car, trying to figure out what I was going to do because I had just finished a bachelor's in psychology. And so I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with a bachelor's in psychology. And actually something popped up on social media, believe it or not. Mm. And some women were saying some very nasty things about some incidents that were happening around the country. And I found myself actually telling my story on social media that day Mm. about postpartum depression. And that's when I realized that there needed to be more support out there. There needed to be more education and advocacy because people really don't know what postpartum depression is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. And that's a hard way to realize that too, to hear people, it sounds like down talking women and mothers. That's so painful. It takes a lot to get your story out there. At that point, did it feel like it was something you needed to do? So yes, at that point, it was something I needed to do. The child that I had postpartum depression with at that time was actually seven. So Mm -hmm. believe it or not, it took me seven years Mm -hmm. to be able to say, hey, this happened to me. So yes, I do understand how Mm -hmm. this can happen to other women. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point, too, that you're bringing up for me is that, you know, before I knew about it, too, it was kind of like, oh, this happens to other people, but it can happen to all of us, any of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from your experience, and you've told people about what went on for you, and then it sounds like you decided to do something big and start a nonprofit. Right. Well, it wasn't that easy. I decided at that moment, I said, okay, well, you know what, there needs to be something. Mm -hmm. I started off as a volunteer with a national organization. And I started off as an area coordinator. And what I found is when women would call in asking for resources, whether it be support groups or psychiatrists or counselors, I didn't have anywhere to send anyone in my Mm -hmm. area provider. There were no support groups, but the closest provider was about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you're going through depression, you have a hard time getting out of bed. So to drive 45 minutes for treatment, I knew something had to be done. So that's Mm -hmm. when I said, okay. Wow. But still, even that takes a lot. I mean, you have the passion and the drive to do it. It's no small feat to open an entire nonprofit and start helping a lot of people. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing work. And so how long have you been doing that again? Two years. September 2014 is when I began. Oh, fantastic. Wow. So yeah, I want to know a little bit more about that too, just in terms of the scope of the work that you do at a mother's sanctuary and how you're helping moms. 
Okay, so we offer support groups. We're trying to broaden our support groups around the city of Houston. The city of Houston is huge, mm-hmm. so <laughs> we're in the process of finding tons of volunteers to, to actually lead those support groups. But currently, we have support groups every second and fourth Tuesday mm-hmm. of the month, and we have support groups every first Friday of the month in various locations. On top of the support groups, we actually educate mothers. We give them a class on what PPD is, pregnant moms. We give them a class on PPD and what signs and symptoms to look for. And this way, after baby, they'll know what to look for. Their partners will know what to look for. So, you know, we're not just dealing with moms that have had the babies, but we're trying to Mm -hmm. spearhead it during pregnancy as well. That's so important. What have you found from the moms who learn about it before they give birth? So they're better prepared. Yeah. Because what we're finding is the information that they're getting from either their OBs or if they have other children in pediatric offices, it's not really been talked about much. You know, Mm -hmm. you'll ask some moms, okay, well, were you screened for PPD? And Mm -hmm. they're like, absolutely not. I never saw any questions Mm -hmm. concerning PPD. Whereas you'll have some moms after baby, they're like, yes, the pediatrician, which is awesome to me. (laughs) The pediatrician asks every well baby checkup, they do a screening for me. So Oh, that's so nice to know that that is being done in little pockets, hopefully in more places. But at least you're hearing yes sometimes now. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's finally, you know, fully on the radar. So you're giving the moms a class beforehand to educate them about what could happen. That's awesome. What other kinds of things do you focus on at there at a mother sanctuary? We do two trainings, actually. We do a perinatal mood disorder training, which is where we reach out to local hospitals. We've actually gotten some doulas and midwives on board to take the training. Great. That way they actually know how to handle their clients because there are postpartum doulas out there. Mm -hmm. And when you go through postpartum doula training, you actually don't have a training about postpartum depression. Hmm. So a lot of the doulas here in the Houston area decided that they needed a training. So we've worked on that. We've worked on mental health first aid as well. We offer mental health first aid classes to a lot of the community. That's not just like a business class. We Hmm. offer it to the entire community. This Mm. way, they'll know what to look for if someone is going through crisis. It's like your first steps. It's like CPR of mental health. Oh, that's fantastic. And so you offer those trainings at your location or go out to places and offer that? So we actually go out. They'll say that they want the training and we'll go to them. We'll meet them at their location and give Mm. them a training. It's an eight-hour certification course that can be broken down to two days or all one day in eight hours. That's awesome. I think, I feel like everybody should take that class. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like everybody, everybody. I mean, we all need that. Every one of us has someone who's touched by somebody who's going through something that it's affecting their mental and emotional health. Correct. And most of us, you know, unless we've gone through some training ourselves, most of us don't know what to do or how to help. Wow. Mm-hmm. And man, you've done a lot in two years. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's amazing. You're just getting out there, know, just I doing kinda, it. I kind of was like boots to ground. Let's hit the ground running. Yes. And my really good, I call her my mentor. She says, okay, so we're going to get you some help because we don't <laughs> want you, you know, we want you to be here next year. And I said, oh, I'm not going anywhere. Right. Yeah, that's that passion. It keeps you going. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's really, really great. So, I mean, you're giving the helps to the moms who are finding you and getting this information, giving training and support to the community to be able to help those moms. Mm -hmm. This is really thinking broadly and trying to make sure it sounds like that there's a net all the way around. Right. It's really, really, really great. And so also in these two years, you somehow managed to write a book too? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we managed to write a book. It was myself and it was 15 women 
total. Mm -hmm. And we told our stories of our maternal mental health illnesses and exactly what we went through, but Mm -hmm. not just what we went through, how we overcame it. So whether it was Mm -hmm. treatment or support groups, we did because we wanted moms to know that there are people out there that look like them. And there are people out there that are having some of the same things and thinking some of the same things that they're going through, you know, so. So the 15 women basically told their story in however many details they they wanted to? Yes. So the project was put out actually on social media using Mm -hmm. Facebook and Twitter. And I made sure that anyone who told their story did have a silver lining at the end because Mm -hmm. I wanted I wanted it to be very clear that this wasn't a place that you were going to be in forever. Mm -hmm. So the moms did really well. You know, it was hard. There there was some coaching through the writing process because you'd have moms that would start writing. And then, you know, at some points found that it it may have been too hard to write. But we have a private group and it has been one of the most supportive groups getting this women through this writing process. And still now we're still communicating, still talking to one another, checking on each other. So it's pretty awesome. Wow. I mean, just as you were talking through it, I'm thinking there can be so much healing in just writing your own story. And yes, did you find that that was part of the process? Yes, yes. I know for myself in general, it was very healing because, Mm -hmm. you know, some things that happened that I talk about in my story, I sworn my aunt to secrecy, like she couldn't Mm -hmm. tell anybody. She Mm -hmm. could not tell anybody I had postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And it was after I wrote my story when I said, okay, I feel better. There was a huge release. Mm -hmm. And even with some of the other moms, some of their moms are like, thank you so much. You know, no matter how painful it was. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) right. You know, and it wasn't honestly, Kat, it wasn't even the writing of the stories. It was more of the logistical stuff, Mm. (laughs) getting through the process. But there, a lot of them are really happy they were able to share their stories. That's amazing. So you titled the book A Dark Secret. And I think that's so appropriate because that's often what it feels like to be going through something that, you know, having postpartum depression or anxiety or OCD or PTSD, anything, any number of things feels like how we're made to feel about it is ashamed and that we have to keep quiet and we can't talk about it. And uh, it does begin to feel like a really dark secret. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's what I wanted moms to know that it's okay. Speak up, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to remain a secret. And believe it or not, Kat, a lot of women that told their stories were actually telling their stories for the first time. Mm -hmm. So there were family members that didn't know Mm -hmm. a large part of their story or what was Mm -hmm. happening. So it was, it opened up great conversation between Mm -hmm. family members and the writers. It was great. Wow. I mean, even I have your book and I'm making my way through and it's powerful. And even if nobody gets the book, (laughs) but everybody should get the book, but even if nobody gets it, how amazing is it that how much healing came out of just the process? Mm -hmm. Just, I agree. Just that. That's amazing. In terms of like the things that the moms are dealing with who wrote their own stories, what are some of the either diagnoses or treatments or issues that they are discussing in the book? Some of the moms are discussing their postpartum OCD and that she talks about how she frequently would go online and try to figure out what was going on with her. And Mm -hmm. Google gave her every diagnosis in the book. I think at one point Google actually killed her. Right. So, of course, someone, you know, with postpartum OCD didn't take to that very well. But eventually, you know, after seeing her counselor, she was able, you know, to figure out exactly what it was. Another mom who talked about her birth and her birth being, you know, very traumatic, her first birth. But during that time, she also had some family stuff happening, too. So she talked about how she was able to overcome those things and spirit had a plan for her second child. What I think is really great about the book is that, you know, so much of what we go through when we're going through our own 
mental health crisis or mental health struggles is it's so internal. Like you were saying before, a lot of the family members didn't even know that they were suffering or the moms kept it quiet enough or kept themselves looking good enough for that nobody was asking questions. Mm -hmm. That So much of it is happening like in our body and in our minds and how we perceive ourselves. So it sounds like in the book, the things that people are describing aren't necessarily things that people would see from just looking at them. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think people have a misconception that mental health in general has a look. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and that is not true at all. You know, the person yeah. sitting right next to you who seems like they may have it all together mm-hmm. may have something going on. So for me, this kind of put a face to it. Mm-hmm. It was like, again, this is me. This mm-hmm. is what's going on with me. This is what I look like. And mm-hmm. nobody knew. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think for people who are going to read the book, and especially moms or family members who are going through it or family members who know someone who's been through it, to be able to get kind of a peek in and see those details, see what happens, kind of what depression does to our thinking what anxiety does to how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about the world. And being able to see it in those kinds of details is really important for other people so that they can have like a real sense of what is going on. Right. Because if you haven't been through it, you don't know. Exactly. I was actually having that conversation earlier with someone because on top of a mother's sanctuary, I actually teach. (laughs) Oh boy. (laughs) Yeah, you have a lot of roles. <laughs> I teach. So I have a student there that is actually going through something. And, you know, where I completely understand and I know exactly what she's going through, mm-hmm. my coworker doesn't understand. Mm-hmm. And what I've tried to explain to her is it's fortunate that she's not had to deal with depression. But it's unfortunate for the student because now, you know, my coworker can't empathize with her. She just doesn't get it. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, she can get up. She can do it. And I'm like, oh, Mm -hmm. sometimes it's not that easy. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's so you, we think that people will be able to just kind of snap out of it or Mm -hmm. do what they want. But the reality is, is if they could have done that, they would have done it already. They would have. Yep. Absolutely. They would have snapped right out of it. And that's not to say that people can't get better, but it's not at the snap of a finger. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's so powerful about the book that you have and the work that you're doing also with the Mother's Sanctuary, but, you know, in your teaching job, because you know you can also be helping other people to reach that sense of empathy or at least try to for them. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the book, what kind of feedback have you had from other people who have read the book or telling you what their experiences is after reading the stories? A lot of the women felt validated. They worried that sometimes they thought that it was just them and other people were telling them that, oh, you know, I didn't go through this. You know, a mom shouldn't go through this. But after reading the stories, they felt validation Mm. and they were empowered and they were just relieved that there were and there are other moms out there that are going through the same thing and can Mm -hmm. relate. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a relatively simple concept that just to have yourself be represented out there in the world can make you feel better. I mean, it's not that complicated, (laughs) but it seems like specifically when we're talking about depression and anxiety, there's such a stigma still around all of that, that like you were saying before, there could be like two people sitting next to each other, both dealing with something, but not Mm -hmm. know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have sort of a big question, but also a general question with the work that you do and the book and all that you're doing in Houston. What do you really want moms to know about maternal mental health? I want moms to know that it exists. I want moms to know that If they are feeling down in any way, that it's okay to speak up. Mm. I want moms to know that this is more common than they think. And it is okay to say, hey, I'm going through this and I need help. 
I feel like it's really important to tell moms that it's okay. You're not alone. Mm -hmm. And in the same breath, you will get better. You'll get better. Yeah, that's really powerful. And there are people like you out there doing the work to make sure that they get better. And I really hope the folks who are listening can hear that and understand that they'll get better. And in terms of the work that you do at a mother sanctuary, I know you're having a big event coming up. Yes. So, and that's super exciting. But please tell us about that. <laughs> so we are having our inaugural gala for hope. We wanted something a little different. I'm guessing you can tell I'm always like, I want something different. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I wanted something different because a lot of times when we have events, surrounding maternal mental health, they're really stuffy. Mm. Okay. They're stuffy events. They're more learning atmosphere. And mm -hmm. this time I wanted the community to come out and have fun. Nice. That's so we great. are having fun. Masquerade theme. I'm going to have a table. If they don't come in a mask, they can design their mask. And this is one of our big fundraisers for the year because in all actuality, we are a nonprofit organization right? and we have to keep our doors open to support moms. So in order for moms to continue to be able to get the free support and support groups and referrals, we're doing this fundraiser this year and I'm really excited about it. Yeah. When is it? It's May 6th here in Houston and Jane Honickman, which was the founder of Postpartum Support International, is actually going to be our keynote speaker. So That's I'm so cool. excited to see her. <laughs> yeah. I call her my bestie. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. I mean, that just speaks volumes to the kind of person you are and the kind of work that you're doing and that you have that kind of connection with her. She's been doing the work for a long time. Yes, yes, she has. And how much she believes in you and the work that you're doing that she's going to come and keynote for you. That's so cool. Yes, I'm so appreciative to her. When I messaged her, I said, okay, <laughs> Yay. And she's like, absolutely, LaShanta, anything mm -hmm. for you. So, oh. yeah. yeah. Yeah, BFFs. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Wow. Okay, so May, sorry, what was the date again? May? May 6th of this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so folks who are in the Houston area or folks who want to come on in, they can join in. Where can they find information about the gala? Everything is on Eventbrite right now. So mm -hmm. amsgala.eventbrite.com. We are currently in the process of creating our Facebook page and our website should be finished today for the gala. So. Oh, nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So then for now, folks can go to amsmothers.com to find out about a mother sanctuary. Correct. Mm -hmm. And to your website, lashantaedwards.com to find out more about you and the book, Correct. The Dark Secret. Yes. Yeah. Great. Well, it was fantastic to talk with you today, LaShanta. I'm so excited about your work and to be able to tell people about what you're doing. And please, folks, go get A Dark Secret and learn more about postpartum mood disorders and how to get through them. So thank you so much, LaShanta, for being with us today. Again, thank you so much for having me. I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're my favorite person right now. <laughs> I love that. Yes. Yes, you are coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much again. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being with us. So as you guys can hear, LaShanta is a delightful person. I'm so happy that she was on with us today to tell us about all of the amazing work that she's doing in Houston and with the book. So please do go check out the resources that she offered, amsmothers.com and lashantaedwards.com and the book, A Dark Secret. And take a minute, if you're new to maternal mental health issues, take a minute and read through those stories. If you're a therapist who's considering working with these moms and helping them through their struggle, read through these stories so you can get a really good sense of what goes on internally for moms and the kind of help that they might be looking for. I'm really excited to have this resource out there in the community for you guys and I'm thankful to LaShanta and the 15 women who contributed their stories. So thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for joining us today. 
If you or someone you know is having a hard time, help is available. Please look for resources for help at momandmind.com. Also, please subscribe and share this podcast. Together, we can support moms and families so that no one has to deal with this alone. Thank you for being a part of the Mom and Mind community.